Good news everyone, got a new Fuse Sun Tracker version ready for you all to try out and of course it's got some great new bugs, uh, I mean features. So let's go ahead and have a look at those. I've already prepared a little sound loop here. It's got a simple octave bass in channel 1 and uh, some arpeggio-ish kind of thing in channel 2. There's nothing going on in channel 3 and there's some drums set in the FX pattern and it sounds like this okay first new feature a lot of people have been asking is it possible to have more fine-grained tempo control and technically the answer to that is no because of the way that Houston Tracker is constructed but technically you can't make music on a calculator anyway so what I came up with a little trick uh, it's maybe not great, but it's better than nothing, I think. So, see how the global speed setting is currently set to 8. What this means is that one row will take 8 ticks to play, or frames, or whatever you want to call it. Let me replicate this with an fx command, so you can better see what's going on. Uh, the reason for that being that uh, the fx command will update the speed immediately during playback, but the global setting doesn't if I change it while the player is running. Now, in the previous versions, the speed ran from 0 to hex ff, uh, it no longer does. Instead, it now runs from 0 to just hex 3f. What? Uh, well, here's the catch. You can now add certain values to the speed base value and that will reduce the length of the first tick. For instance, to reduce the length uh, by one quarter, you would add hex C0. Uh, so let me go ahead. Now, if I do this, You will notice that the loop now runs slightly faster. If I had hex 80 instead, it will reduce the length of the first tick by one half. So again, a little bit faster. And adding hex 40 will reduce the first tick by three quarters. So again, a little bit faster, but not as fast as with speed 7. Okay. That's that. I'm gonna remove that again. Next uh, effect is uh, an enhancement of the B effect, like uh, which normally breaks the current pattern and jumps to the next one, like so. Right. But now. In the new version, the B command can also be used as a loop command within the pattern. And uh, the way this works, the first tick specifies, uh, the first digit I mean specifies the number of loops, so let's say 4, and the second one sets the number of back steps, so the number of rows that uh, the player will loop back. And now we got this. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna remove that again to demonstrate the uh, next uh, new feature. Next new effect is effect number seven. I call it the autochord, though it might also be called the terrorizer, as you'll notice in a bit. It's kind of hard to explain what it does, so let me just give you an example. It's our normal loop. Now, see, it adds some kind of chord to the bass note, and it's uh, it's pretty random to be honest. And as you raise the parameter. Things tend to get increasingly nasty. 
So, uh, okay. Chuck that out and on to the next one. And the next one concerns the E command. And that one's gotten a big overhaul and I think you're gonna love it. So first of all, we need a new FX pattern. I've already created one here uh, with some E commands and some parameters too. Now in the previous versions, this would have reset some of the currently active effects, but now it does something quite different. You can still get the old behavior by adding hex 80 to the parameter, but uh, you can read up on that on the manual. Anyway, what E does now is execute several effects at once. And the way this works is that you link another FX pattern to it, similar to how you use effect 8 since uh, version 2.10. So this E3 here means uh, we are linking FX pattern 3, FX pattern 4 and so on. So what's an FX pattern 3? Let's have a look. <clears throat> <clears throat> we can see 480, which sets the duty for channel 1 to a 50-50 square wave. We can see 510, which sets the duty for channel 2 to almost pin pulse like uh, setting. We can see 704, which uh, switches on the bespoken auto chord uh, effect. And we can see 104, which... Uh, pans channel 2 to the right and uh, what's in the next one let's have a look okay change the duty of uh, channel 1 and 2 switch off the auto chord and pan channel 2 to the left next one um, change the duties again set another auto chord and pan to the other side again and finally, switch on the noise glitch effect for channel 1, switch on the sit effect for channel 2, turn off the auto chord and pan to the other side again. And the result we get... Okay, first of all I'm gonna mute uh, channel 1 so we can hear a bit better what's happening. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's add uh, channel 1 for some extra dramatic effect. Uh, pretty nice, isn't it? You can stack up to 5 effects in this manner, by the way. So that should really help with that limitation of having only one effect available per row. Even though it'll burn through the available FX patterns pretty fast. Okay, one last uh, note. A few of the copy-paste related keys have changed. So just to make it a little more consistent, basically alpha plus key now always does the opposite of what the key alone does. So if key minus copies the current row, then uh, alpha and minus will delete it. I'll read up on that on the, in the manual. These changes were proposed by Garvalf, who has also done a lot of testing for use in Tracker 2. So, Good thinking, mate. Oh, that's all for now. Okay, thanks. Bye.